So in the UK there are about 45,000 lung cancer diagnoses every year and the percentage of non-smokers is about 10 to 15 percent. So somewhere between um, four and 6,000 cases of lung cancer in never smokers per year in the United Kingdom. It's very interesting. I think traditionally there have been three potential, three major contributors to lung cancer and never smokers. The first is hereditary ancestry, germline genetics. Secondly, um, radon exposure has been associated with um, lung cancer and never smokers. And thirdly, air pollution. And air pollution was something that we've been studying over the last sort of five to ten years here in the lab to understand whether air pollution is not only associated with lung cancer but whether it actually directly causes lung cancer. So we were very interested to understand uh, the relationship between air pollution exposure and risk of lung cancer, specifically EGFR mutant lung cancer, which is a disease that's enriched in never smokers. And um, to do that we had to look across the planet at areas of the planet like the UK where there's low pollution levels and areas of the planet where there are high pollution levels. And traditionally, um, equatorial countries are associated with higher pollution levels. So um, Southeast Asia, typically um, places like South Korea, Hong Kong, Southern China, have very high levels of air pollution. So we were interested in working with countries like Taiwan and South Korea to ask if you go across the country and look at rising air pollution levels, is that associated with a higher risk of EGFR mutant lung cancer? And that's what we find. Typically, lung cancer in smokers is characterized by a high level of mutations, and those mutations are brought about by tobacco exposure, by exposure to cigarettes, um, and that causes a particular characteristic of mutations. We call it a footprint in DNA, characterized by this, these C to A base pair mutations. Uh, and those mutations can result in um, the activation of key oncogenes like KRAS, a typical example would be the KRAS G12C mutation, um, which is induced by a C to A mutation that activates the KRAS protein and causes cell signaling to the nucleus and tells the cell to divide and form an early cancer. That's a classic example of a mutation that occurs due to an environmental carcinogen, tobacco smoke, in a, in a key gene that causes proliferation of an early cancer cell. In contrast, Air, um, in contrast, lung cancer in never smokers is characterized by a very low number of mutations. So if air pollution was going to contribute to lung cancer in never smokers, it would have to do so in a way that was independent of causing this mutational footprint. Um, so we set out to understand how that might happen. And we find that our mouse models, when we expose our mice to air pollution, we see more cancers occurring. Um, and a greater number of tumours and a greater number of cancers. And then we ask why that might be happening. And what we find is that air pollution induces an inflammatory response in the lung, in the, in the lining of the lung, including one protein, or we call it a cytokine, called interleukin-1-beta. So that's a very good question. And um, one of the uh, reasons we became very interested in this was because we saw that when lungs are exposed to air pollution, the normal lining of the lung releases interleukin-1 beta. And interleukin-1 beta um, causes the expansion of these progenitor cells. Um, and these progenitor cells um, are, we think, the root cause of the problem. Uh, they, they're involved in tissue wound healing and response to injury, but they, we think they can also represent the first step in the initiation of a cancer. So um, we got very interested in interleukin-1-beta because about five years ago there was a clinical trial uh, published by Novartis showing that anti-IL-1-beta, an antibody against interleukin-1-beta, um, that was used to, in the trial to test whether this could be used to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease, they also found that it lowered the incidence of non-small cell lung cancer. So it, it reduced the number of lung cancers that were diagnosed in the population treated with 
anti-IL-1 beta. So that shows that interleukin-1 beta antibodies can act as a preventative um, um, uh, drug that prevents lung cancer at the population level in otherwise healthy adults. Um, the research is still at an early stage and we've still got a lot to do, um, a lot of work to do to understand how this all works. Well, I think, I think we have to uh, work with our democratically elected politicians to work with them to, to understand the importance of this problem and to make every effort to lower particulate emissions in, in urban environments. Uh, and it's you know, not just coming from um, power stations. In London, um, a lot of the particulate matter is coming from exhausts, tires, brakes, um, motors, motor engines, uh, driving buses, etc. Um, and, and also um, combustion of fossil fuels. So, so I think we need to campaign to stop using those. I think we need to be very um, cognizant of the, of the potential harm that air pollution has on human health and do our best to lower emissions where we possibly can. So, so I'd say the answer to that is really up, up to us, up to us. Uh, and I say that because, um, and that is that climate health and human health are intimately linked. You can't separate the two. Air pollution, I think, is the silent killer. I think it's responsible for, and the data show, it's responsible for somewhere between seven and nine million deaths per year globally. That's as many as tobacco. So, and it's, it's obviously not just associated or probably causing cancer, but also dementia, uh, diabetes, premature low birth weight babies, cardiovascular disease, strokes, heart attacks, etc. So it causes a number of different diseases. Um, and we're only really beginning to understand how and why this is, this is the case.